Hello again, YouTubers, RC fanatics. <laughs> okay, it's been a little bit, a uh, little while since I have done a video, and honestly, some of my initial subscribers, I think, don't really like it. But I still, I have some Nitro videos that I'm editing right now, but this one I'm just making it, I'm posting it up. It's the transition from uh, Spectrum to Free Sky. So, the first thing I will come straight out is say, uh, I ended up getting a Free Sky X90 Plus Special Edition. With the M9 gimbals, it also has the R9M module in the back. Uh, essentially, crossfire, but not $300. This thing can go up to 1 watt. Uh, it also has, uh, runs off 2S, not 3S. Uh, the Free Sky side actually says it can do up to 12.6 volts. No, it can only do up to 12 volts. So, only running off a uh, 2S battery. I've already got one of those. Uh, but things like setting up a splash screen, setting up your switches, it's not as easy as Spectrum. Spectrum has a very intuitive interface, very easy to use. I was able to get my Stingray 500, which, let me get it real quick. Uh, I was able to get this set up and flying, which I'll do a video on this as well. Uh, within three days, uh, every morning I would spend, uh, before work, I would spend about an hour, maybe an hour and a half working on it. But this thing flies awesome. Uh, it's slower than a mini quad, but it's capable of things a mini quad cannot do. It's collective pitch. So every one of these, the propellers can change pitch in mid flight. So, in order for me to set this up with this, it's going to take some homework. It's going to take probably a day or two just to figure out, okay, uh, how do I figure out the pitch? Because the Spectrum, you can just go straight in, uh, set up your throttle, your curve, your uh, pitch curve, all that stuff. With this, it's not nearly as easy. I'm running OpenTX. Uh, I actually traded my Spectrum DX7S for this because I'm wanting to get some stuff one of the main, uh, I also ordered a Diatone, uh, what, what was it, GTM3, it's a 3 inch quad, it's capable of 97 miles per hour, UAV Futures did a, v a video on that. Only downside about it is, it uses BL Heli S, not BL, Hel BL Heli 32, but it still flies great from everything they said, and I'm not the most experienced quad pilot, but I'm getting up there quickly because of all the stick time that I'm getting. But when I turn mine on, you can actually see Twitch EFPV, Power Evo, that's my channel, and you can actually set every th switches for what you want them to say, and if it's getting annoying for people, you can go into the menu, and you can turn that down. I don't remember exactly where because I'm still learning. Yeah, hold down the menu button and then volume. Wait, menu. You can go down and you can tell them, turn the volume down all the way. So if I flip a switch, there's nothing. You can also plug headphones into it. Oh. And it's just nice when you first turn it on, it will tell you the flight mode I'm in, which usually I'll be in acro, which is air mode, uh, with nothing, I'll have it set to manual, but just getting pictures on here, stuff like that, I will say, Going from Spectrum to this is like going from a battery powered surface vehicle to a nitro surface vehicle. There is a very, very steep learning curve. But there are a lot of videos. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say rest in peace, JC. Uh, I have actually learned that Project Blue Falcon. That's all the videos I've been watching. He passed away, I believe, a year ago, two days ago. So. 
a lot of the videos that he did, he was never able to continue his channel because he ended up passing away in a motorcycle accident. So that's a damn shame for the FPD community as a whole because, I mean, he did so many videos to help people and now we have the Horus, the Horus X10S, the Horus X12S, stuff like that. And if you have no idea, uh, the guys that have been making videos for a long time and this radio has been out I believe about two and a half years. So it's a little bit younger than my DX7S was, but it's capable of a lot more. I can get a Spectrum module to put in the back. Yes, it will add some latency, but I'll still be able to fly everything. It's just all the setup inside here. I mean, I have 14 pages. I have 13 pages in my menu and everyone goes down. I mean flight modes, inputs, mixer, outputs, curves, global variables, I have no idea what that is, logical switches, special functions, that's where you can do your switches, uh, your RSSI setup, sensors, stuff like that, so that's actually telemetry, your display, uh, and then the model selection, there's just, there's so much model setup, helicopter setup, so yeah, that's that's all of them. But then there's even some sub menus uh, like radio setup when you hold it down, and then you got uh, everything on your SD card, your trainer, your version that it's running, switches test, analogs test, hardware calibration. I mean, there's just so there's a lot on this to learn. But I will say. Just as Nitro gives you a more, if you're a person that likes to tinker, likes to customize things, this is the radio for you. A Free Sky Radio is the radio for you. I mean, there's so much you can do. I'm not sure if you can set up a custom splash screen when it first uh, turns on. I still got to edit mine a little. So, when you make the change if you make the change it's it's going to take some learning it's going to take a lot of reading a lot of watching videos but you will get better range you'll have a lot more oh, what's the word uh, so many more options i mean hell a receiver with rssi the xm plus is 16 dollars when you get fpv a receiver from Spectrum with telemetry, you're going to have, with RSSI, you have to get the one with telemetry, $50. The RXSR, I believe, is $25. So half the price, you get telemetry, RSSI, and you're paying half the price, and you get more. And this thing talks to you. I mean, yes, here lately, Spectrum has been following the pack, and... Upgrading uh, their stuff, making better, like the iX12 has come out. But you got to realize how much that is. Spectrum asks so much. And on this, I have these sliders on both sides. I mean, I can choose what I want any one of these switches to do. I'm not bound by any type of firmware that Spectrum has making it so oh, you can only use this switch for dual rates or... You can only use this switch for flight mode. You can only use this switch for gear or flaps. There's just so many, so many things that can hinder you with Spectrum. So if you don't want to spend, uh, I believe it's 189 dollars to get this radio, which, in my opinion, is a hell of a deal. Mine also came with kickstand. I uh, also got the R9N module, uh, receiver for it. So I got three XM Plus receivers. So I got a hell of a deal. Just straight up trade all my receivers for Spectrum except uh, one satellite, well, this POS satellite receiver that came, came, that I, it's just a regular Spectrum satellite receiver that I decayed that I had in my Baby Hawk, but I would have a fail safe at about 300 yards. So far with this, I have gone out over 500 yards and I had no fail safe. And that was about as far as I really wanted to go. So, yeah, don't be afraid of doing it, but just do remember, if you're going to make a change, expect a steep learning curve, and especially if you have helicopters, 
you're gonna have to learn some things. Yes, there are some videos online for helicopters, but if you have something like the Stingray, you're gonna have to figure that out on your own because Curtis Youngblood only did it for Spectrum, Futaba, JR, and I believe that's about it. But it's not hard if you just sit down, do your homework, figure it out. But just don't give up. I will say, the M9 gimbals, they use Hall Effect sensors, they do not use potentiometers. That was another thing that I did not like about Spectrum, is it used gimbals with potentiometers. That's what pretty much all of them use. But this used Hall Effect sensors, which the gimbal has a little magnet on it, and the Hall Effect sensor actually measures the magnetism. So instead of actual physically touching parts that will wear out over time, no matter what you do, this is a lot better, and they also have the M9R gimbal, so if you're a racer, it only has a 45 degree stick throw instead of 60 degree stick throw, which a lot of people talk about racing. If they're full throttle, they also can't get to full yaw or whatever. If you're a mode 1, I fly in mode 2. The gimbals themselves are a lot shorter, but you can also set them taller. They're M uh, M3, I believe, compared to M2 on Spectrum. So you'll, I thought that my gimbal tips would work, didn't work. So, so many things I'm having to replace. I don't mind it because I'm no longer being hindered and being held back by what I want to do. I will say I had to, I have uh, two Acro Bs. Where are you little guys at? And I got the uh, new Tiny Whoop. Boss sauce and true sauce motors along with the frames for yesterday. I can't fly any of these because the Flight controllers on them are for spectrum. So I bought two and I'm selling these not the entire thing I'm just selling the flight controller up under the VTX Can't believe for $35 a piece. They're 50 new. These are almost like new one of them is new I've, I've flown about 10 packs through it. So yeah, uh, a little bit used hasn't been uh, hasn't been crashed, hasn't been in water, but even if these go into water, you're fine. I had one that I had not conformal coated. It ended up wa in water. I unplugged while it was still in the water, put it in front of the hair dryer for a little while, and it was fine. But yeah, these things are great inside. I don't have the other stuff that's out in the living room. Uh, if you're interested in a Acro B flight controller, Tell me in the comments below. They're 35 bucks shipped uh, through PayPal only. Goods and services. And I'll keep it safe for everybody, even myself. And I will even show they work. I have DVR footage of both. I have the NEB and the UNIB. And NEB is the one I fly indoors only. And then I have one that I fly outdoors only. But then I have more stuff coming. Uh, I have basically an entire tiny wolf setup coming. Except I'm going to have to be using a Acro B uh, brain flight controller because, again, Spectrum hinders stuff. The you have to have a Spectrum radio for the. From everything I've read, uh, there's mods you can do, so you can use Free Sky on it. But that's just the way Horizon Hobby has done it. Anything that they sell, you have to go with, unless you get a plug and play. If you get a bind and fly, it's going to come with Spectrum. That makes sure you stick with them. Oh, yeah, this thing's so nice. So easy to go through, yeah. But there's only a little you can do. I will say, I sold my 5T. It's set. I never use it. I ended up buying a, the Diatone uh, 5 packs to get me started. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. The... Going from Spectrum to Free Sky, expect to be held back a little, but not long. Once you can learn it, I mean, probably day one, it's going to be like you getting back into quads for the very first time because there's so much you have to learn about the Tyrannus. There's going to be a lot of videos and stuff you're going to have to read and learn if you want to customize it the way I did. Especially upgrading the firmware, upgrading your receiver when you get it because it doesn't have the newest firmware. I, I didn't even have RSSI. I had to upgrade every one of my XM Plus receivers. That's why I made a custom little wiring harness for it with the pins that came with it. And so now all I have to do is 
plug it into my transmitter, take the module out of the back, plug it into this, uh, I've already got the firmware on here now, so just plug it into this, plug it into my receiver, flash firmware, put it back in my quad, and I'm flying with RSSI. A lot of people don't know what RSSI is, receiver signal strength, whatever the I means. So it sends back to your transmitter the strength of the RF signal, the radio frequency signal that the quad is receiving. Or you can use these helicopters. Some, a lot of European people actually use these for driving cars. And there's, when I went to, I always have my disarm right here. That's why I wanted this. I like those two shoulder buttons. I wanted all the extra switches. That's why I went with this and not the QX7. Originally, this was over here. With a spectrum, you would have to take it apart, unsolder each one of these, move them over, solder them back in with this, take it apart, unplug each one, and then plug them back in where you want them. And now I have, because when I disarm, I get my, when I'm coming in for a landing, usually with my smaller stuff, I'll come in, I'll get close, get a throttle so it's hovering and slowly moving towards me. And then assume, I only do this with my smaller stuff. Sometimes I'll do it with my five incher. And I'll just kill it. So it's a lot easier for me because I can just come over real quick and change it instead of having to do this. And there's no way for me to do the throttle unless I'm like this. And then there's a possibility I will drop it. Well, yeah, this has gone on for long enough. Oh, God, politics, getting so tired of it. Ignore that. But this is the office of the house, so whoever turned this on, I didn't even bother changing it, so sorry. I try to keep politics out of my videos, because politics are everywhere. Turn the TV on, it's politics. So, just know what you're getting into when you go to Free Sky. Better, yes, in my opinion, better. Uh, honestly, it feels better than a Spectrum. I had a DX7S, it just... Seeing that I'm a summer, it feels better. I mean, even if I was a pincher, I mean, it feels awesome. It feels a lot better than my Spectrum did when I would try to pinch. And like I said, you got these sliders. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight switches. You got these potentiometers. There's an S3 that you can set up for a six-way or whatever you want to use it for. Most people put a six-way potential a six-way switch right here. For a big quad to have several different flight modes, or you can just set it, return to home, all those different stuff, all that different stuff, then you have to calibrate it. So there's a lot more you can do with it. The Spectrum, you crack that baby open, your warranty shot. With this, you can make it yours. And that's what I love about it. It's complicated, yes, but it's an awesome radio. I'll never touch a Spectrum again. I'll get a Spectrum module for some of the stuff that you can only use Spectrum for, but other than that, no reason to ever go back to Spectrum, no. So, like usual, thanks for watching. Peace.